Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Pardon if there's any wind going on, I'm just recording from my iPhone here. And I'm on vacation, just wanted to throw out a real quick video. I am on, not the banks, but on the a gorge of the Columbia River. And that's Vantage, that's Vantage, this little town of Vantage in Washington. And this is not the Washington, Oregon border situation. This is all Washington. Uh, this is part of the Columbia River I've never seen. And it does wander all around a lot. So I really never, I knew that, but I never really conceived that as I was driving to my star party this year, went to the Washington State Star Party, that I would pass over the Columbia River twice in two different locations. And uh, that's a little bridge right there that I'm going to be traversing to head over to Prineville for the rest of my vacation. Well, in this coming weekends, we hear about how Elijah was being fed some food because he just wanted to die. And God helps him and gives him encouragement. But it's interesting because right before this, if you read in First Kings, I think it's 19 verse 1, Jezebel is really ticked off at him because he has demonstrated that the gods of Baal, which were the gods of Jezebel, were not real. And that really ticked her off. More so, I want you to read it. It's kind of bloody, but uh, he actually makes and mocks them by asking this whole, you may know the story, this whole deal where, why don't you have your gods um, demonstrate that they can be powerful. So they had a, a, a contest between God of, uh, of course, Elijah, who would be Yahweh, and the gods of Baal. And so they were supposed to have like a a, uh, a fireplace or a bunch of wood that would be consumed by like a sacrifice for uh, their gods and see what would happen. And of course, the gods of Baal, or the prophets of Baal, priests of Baal, did not have any success. And then just to mock them more, then when it came Elijah's turn, he said, well, why don't we also then dig a, a moat around it and put water on it and just let's douse the whole thing. I mean, so it's just ridiculous. And then he calls upon the Lord and the Lord, a big you know, tongue of fire comes down and laps it all up and destroys the entire uh, uh, sacrifice. What happens to the, the, the priests or prophets of Baal? Well, I'll leave that to you, but let's just say they come to their demise in a kind of permanent way. And from there, Elijah takes off running away because now Jezebel's after him and he gets tired. And that's where we run. That's where we end up in today's first reading for the weekend. So my question for myself was, when have I done something that is supposed to be uh, faithful, but I would pay a price? When have I done something that is uh, something I'm called to do and really stand up for my faith, and yet not everybody's going to agree, or I'm going to enter into some kind of debate, or people are going to mock me, or whatever it might be. I'm going to move around here so I get more sun here. Um, so that is a question for you, and if this has never happened to you, then gosh, maybe... Maybe you're not sharing the gospel enough because this is not a matter of everybody's going to agree with us. The fact is we share our faith. Eventually people are going to not agree with us and also disagree with us to the point of persecuting us. Maybe even calling us names or you may lose a job because of your faith. If you stand up for your faith, if you proclaim your faith, not just in words, but in actions. This is tough. This is the, this is the cross. Christ knew that we would suffer. If we were to follow him, there would be suffering. But know this, just like God helped Elijah, he will help you. If you are open, I know from myself, I have my own adventures uh, and my time away here, but God is always faithful. God will always be there for you. I just want to share that with you, a real short message, and I'm going back to my, my vacation. God bless you. Bye-bye.